Pulse School on realairculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers, DuPont Ferguson Fungicide, and Nodulator XL. No, the um, the field EP input study is actually being funded by the Saskatchewan Pulse Growers, so through through producer checkoff dollars, and it's a multi-year, multi-location study. We're running it. I believe we've got three years of funding, and it's at four locations. So Indian Head, Melfort, Scott, and Swift Current are the locations that are running the trial. And what we are doing is really we've selected all of the major inputs that can go into field P production, and we're trying to determine which of those inputs essentially add the most yield to what we would call an empty package or alternatively if we have a very high input full in, input package and start removing inputs which are the critical ones that when we pull them out start to have a negative impact on yield. Um, so the things that we've been looking at uh, you know, really all quite fundamental uh, seeding rates, so either a low rating seeding rate or a, what I would call a more more typical or, or higher seeding rate, um, probably more to where farmers would like to be. Uh, we've got the inoculants, so a granular inoculant would be our, our high input product versus a, a liquid inoculant is low input. Seed treatments, treatment treated versus untreated, and those are just fungicidal seed treatments. Uh, we've got foliar fungicides as an input, so either the plots do get sprayed with a foliar fungicide, and that's actually a dual application, um, not something producers would typically do, but uh, you know, I think we're just trying to get see the most that we can get out of it, and then if that turns out to be a big input, we can always back up. Uh, and then the final input is actually starter nitrogen, so whether or not we need to apply a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer just to, to get that crop established before we have time for nodules to develop and for the plant to start fixing its own nitrogen. Uh, we are currently uh, two years into, a, into the three-year study, so we've got last year behind us, and actually a colleague of mine uh, was the lead on that, did all the analyses and, and wrote the initial reports on that, but some interesting findings definitely come out of the the initial report. Uh, seeding rate was uh, was a very important input at three out of four locations. So actually, Swift Current, Scott, and Melfort seeding rate was was like, I I don't know if I want to say the most important, but a very important input at all of those three locations. Uh, in terms of the granular inoculant, that was also an important one, particularly in our drier environments. So Swift Current and Scott is where we saw the biggest impact of the granular inoculant as opposed to a liquid and I you know that may just be largely due to to other factors uh, disease is the one that comes to mind being more limiting in the wetter environments which I would call Indian Head and Malfort so at those two um, you know actually at both Indian Head and Malfort fungicides were very important contributed probably more to yield than any other input whether added to an empty package or taken away from a full package and at Indian Head, it was actually the the sole input that either added yield or took away from from our most basic empty package. There, I don't, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily typical or going to be the norm on an annual basis. Uh, we have been going through, a, you know, a very wet cycle here, a lot of disease pressure the last couple of years, and under those circumstances, uh, you know, we had a tremendous response to the fungicide applications and. In the absence of that fungicide application, it's possible that any benefits of, you know, higher seeding rate or granular inoculant were perhaps just, just lost with too much disease. So, you know, if we got into a bit of a drier cycle, I my feeling is that perhaps things like seeding rate, granular inoculant start to, to play a a more important role um, in in these wetter environments. Oh, what else could I say? Um, you know, starter N uh, really was never was never beneficial. I I, I believe if, if anything, it was actually a little bit detrimental. Probably set back nodulation, and there was never a benefit that would carry through the season. Uh, I know just looking at the plots, I would see some greener, nicer looking plots early in the season, but that never actually held up. Uh, seed treatment, to the best of my knowledge, did not provide any any impacts on yield in the in the years where we've done the study so far. And what else am I missing here? Um, fungicide, seed treatment, inoculant, seeding rate, and starter in. I think, I think that's really the gist of it. Uh, you know, we've got a lot to learn. We are going to do it for at least two more years, so 2013 and again 2014. Um, you know, I'm hoping 
depending on how things pan out at the different sites, we may look to to extend some of that if we can if we can get the funding. I know this year here at Indian Head, we we do have some issues with with foot foot, foot rot, root disease um, that you know I have some some concerns about, but. But we'll have to see kind of how, how things work out at the other locations and, and what we can put together at the end of this year.